So in the discussion about galactose metabolism, uh, it's a little more complicated than, let's say, fructose or glucose metabolism. Uh, but it does feed eventually into the glycolysis pathway. So let's take a look at what's going on. We have a galactose molecule. Where did this galactose molecule come from? Well, probably from a lactose uh, molecule that gets broken down into galactose plus glucose. This glucose molecule is going to be broken down via glycolysis. Uh, this galactose molecule should, in a typical person, get broken down and eventually spit back into glycolysis. So you can see it gets first converted phosphorylated, then that phosphorylated version gets converted to glucose. Uh, you rearrange that phosphate to a six position instead. That glucose then uh, is in the glycolysis pathway, glucose six phosphate. That's going to be your first uh, intermediate step in glycolysis. So let's, let's see what enzymes are needed to get there. So let me get rid of this. The galactokinase enzyme is going to be our first, uh, our first enzyme to talk about. Galactokinase. All right, so there's our galactokinase enzyme. So this is going to simply phosphorylate this gla uh, galactose. So for this, we're going to require an ATP to be put into the system. We get our phosphate, spits out an ADP. So that's where our phosphate comes from. The, the, next, uh, the next enzyme is going to be an important one. It'll be a galactose 6 phosphate. Uh, galactose 1 phosphate, my apologies. Phos I'm struggling today. Phosphate, uridyl. Transferase. Transferase, okay. Galactose 1 phosphate, uridyl transferase. What a word. Okay, this is going to be your second enzyme of note. So I'm just going to put a number 1 here and a number 2 here because we'll come back to a discussion about what actually happens when you have a deficiency in these. So you'll note here that this enzyme, the galactose 1 phosphate, uridyl transferase, is going to simply convert a galactose 1-phosphate into a glucose 1-phosphate. And to do this, we're going to need a second, we're going to need a little helper. So that should connect right there. Uh, we're going to need a little helper. And we're going to use galactose 1-phosphate plus a UDP glucose, and then that will spit out a glucose 1-phosphate and a UDP galactose. And this UDP galactose will get epimerized into a UDP glucose again. Thus, you can keep using that and using it to convert more and more one glucose phosphate. All right, so how do we eventually get this UDP glucose? Well, we're gonna take a glucose one phosphate, glucose one phosphate, and we're gonna attach a UTP to it to phosphorylate it. So we're going to add UTP into the system, and that will spit out a uh, UDP glucose, um, and then that is how we get that. So this can be recycled. Once we make some UDP glucoses, they'll eventually get converted here, but we have an enzyme that will keep creating our reactant so we can keep using it over. So once we've made this, once we've got our glucose 1-phosphate, uh, we shift around that phosphate group using the phosphoglucomutase enzyme, and, uh, and then eventually we're in glycolysis. So that's the breakdown of galactose. Uh, let me talk about the deficiencies now. So what actually happens when stuff goes wrong? Uh, I'm going to grab a chair. All right, so we've got disorder one. Disorder one. This is going to be a galactokinase deficiency. So what happens during our galactokinase deficiency? Well, it's going to be an autosomal recessive. Uh, likewise, the second one, the uh, galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase is also going to be an autosomal recessive disease. So 
both are going to be, uh, the newborn is not going to be able to digest or metabolize the galactose in the correct way. So, uh, we have a problem with galactokinase. Is this, is this going to be a problem? Well, yes, it actually is, because this galactose can also get further broken down. Um, I'll use black. We already know how to create this, so I can erase that. It can get further broken down into galactitol. I can spell that wrong. Galactitol. So, um, galactose, if it's not metabolized via the correct mechanism, it can get broken down. And that's going to be aldolase reductase that's going to catalyze this reaction. So, aldolase reductase. So that's the enzyme that's needed. This galactitol uh, can build up within the lens of your eye, uh, eventually leading to cataracts. So if you see a child with cataracts, uh, this should be on your differential. Possibly they have a galactokinase deficiency, uh, so you have this this pathway that gets uh, blocked, the galactose then will get converted into galactitol uh, via the, in your eye, so you can get cataracts in the lens of your eye. However, what happens if you have a galactose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase deficiency? Uh, again, you're going to have a backup. So you're not able to catalyze this reaction right here, so you're going to have a galactose 1-phosphate buildup. Uh, that will eventually lead to a galactose buildup, and again, you're going to have a galactitol buildup, so you're going to have cataracts in the eye if you have this enzyme missing as well. However, this disease is a little more, uh, uh, more severe. You're going to have hepatosplenomegaly, you're going to have enlargement of the liver and the spleen. And then also you may have a mental retardation as well. So this is the basics of the galactose metabolism. Again, I've left out some of the some of the material, um, but th this should really kind of give you a, an idea of the pathway and then some of the deficiencies.